Coming up on today's show, we take a look at one of the first signs of spring here on the University of Washington campus that students and locals look forward to every year. And with sights come sounds, and we will tune into one station that is taking on a new role in shaping Seattle. Also, one historic spot is meeting the needs of Seattle residents. All that and much more because this special edition of GTV News, live from Seattle, starts right now. Welcome back. We are here on this surprisingly sunny day in Seattle, and I say surprising as Seattle is known for its rainy season being just about every season, having rained 150 days out of the 365 last year, which I'd say is pretty insane. It is, but from being a tourist in Seattle for the past two days, we've gotten the chance to learn more about the Emerald City than meets the forecast. From its gorgeous college campus that we are in the middle of right now to its iconic Space Needle, which can be seen from almost anywhere, this city is adored by those who call it home. One thing that is celebrated by not only the locals, but also the nation is the annual blooming of the cherry blossom trees here in the heart of the University of Washington campus. We are here with GTV reporter Carly Rasmussen, who got to take a look at what makes this time of year so special. Carly, what did you get to see today? So University of Washington is actually one of the most prestigious universities in all of America. However, a lot of people don't know that they actually host an annual blooming of the cherry blossom trees, which is from their sister city in Japan. Today I got the opportunity to take a first-hand look, so let's check it out. Spring is in full bloom, which means cherry blossoms for the University of Washington. But the history of these trees have deeper roots than one may think. As I understand the story, the trees were a gift to the University of Washington from our sister city in Japan. I will say it's not talked about enough here on campus. Not only have the trees grown, but new traditions have began to blossom. We have a large Japanese community here, and they've adopted this from a custom in, in Japan where everybody goes out to view cherries. And so here's a place in Seattle where they can do that. And for what may seem like common knowledge, the UW Quad is one of Seattle's best kept secrets. I don't think there are a lot of people in Seattle that really know about the cherry blossoms on campus. But striking a pose and a click of a camera isn't enough to satisfy the memories. We know about the cherry blossoms and my husband and I come here every year to look at them. And when the trees come back next year, so will the people. And while it is very intriguing to look at it through a lens, it is so much more memorable when you actually come see it for yourself. I would agree with you, Carly. This place is beautiful out here today. Thanks for being with us. On this edition of Greetings from GTV reporter Celia Owen takes a look at one business that is serving more than just pastries to its customers. Three Girls, this is Rayleigh. In the heart of Seattle's busiest market is Three Girls Bakery Company. When I owned it, it was like a market hangout kind of, you know. Um, we were just like the Seattle Brenner Brother outlet. And then we relocated to the back of the building and I uh, got a lot of market regulars coming to me for sandwiches. Stephanie Hammond's with. So it built in the time we were back there. But only Seattle locals would know of this family-owned business's unique history. It's the first woman-owned business in Seattle, and it was started by Mrs. Jones and two of her friends. It's also the oldest continually running business in the whole market. It's like you're taking care of something that's over 107 years old, you know, you want to keep it going. I've noticed recently there's been a lot of centennial businesses that aren't making it anymore and you kind of have to change with the times. But lucky for Seattle residents and tourists alike, this shop isn't disappearing, unlike the bread on their shelves. For GTV News, I'm Celia Owen reporting. <laughs> With 107 years under its apron, Three Girls Bakery has been rocking it throughout Seattle's history. That's right, Lily, but what if I told you one local radio station is responsible for launching the radio careers of Nirvana and Pearl Jam, but now it's helping out the city of Seattle with its newest edition. GTV reporter Andrew Wilkie has the story. You're listening to 90.3 FM KXP in Seattle. KEXP has been the station for many popular artists. Mark Arm, uh, who was the lead singer in Green River, uh, was a DJ here as well. Kurt Cobain, the lead singer, knocked on our door, took the record. Uh, Kurt, you know, left, hopped in his car, listened to the radio. So when he didn't hear it, he pulled off the road, found a payphone, and quested Nirvana. And it's not just the music that makes Seattle tune in. 
It's the atmosphere. That's why we built the gathering space, where there's a cafe, there's a small record store, there's a place to uh, hang out uh, for people to be together. I've been radio for 20 some odd years, and there's not many places that build this sense of community. The radio station that is home to Nirvana and Pearl Jam will now be helping out Seattle's newest franchise, Rock the House. The CEO of NHL Seattle, Todd Laiwiki, suggesting that we consider becoming the music programmer for the NHL game. So we're helping them curate the musical experience when they walk into the key arena. And we do that because we are a part of this community. With the addition of the new NHL team, KEXP will continue to keep the locals listening. For GTV News, I'm Andrew Wilkie. Thanks, Andrew. It'll be great to see KEXP and Seattle's future unnamed hockey team heat up the ice next season. And speaking of heating up, GTV reporter Tessa Balk is at one of the hottest spots in town that has been blowing minds for years. Let's take a look. Seattle is, uh, has become an epicenter for glass blowing. There's more studios in Seattle than, um, than anywhere else in the country, and therefore there's more glass blowers. It's ever growing as new glass blowers or new artists get uh, interested. And the skilled glass blowers have crafted not only art, but a lifestyle. People want to play with, with making art, but there's a portion of people who want to do art and are, are driven to make art, and I think most glass blowers are driven. While glass blowing is an art that some can pick up, it's best when the knowledge is passed down, creating community. They worked with other artists to build their skills. You know, glass blowing typically is, is a team effort. It's a cooperative community because they need each other. The glass blowing community's success is through the technique of togetherness, collaborating their knowledge to create more. For GTV News, I'm Tessa Balk reporting. Thanks, Tessa. Unfortunately, that's going to wrap up our show for today, but we hope that you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about what the locals love about the city of Seattle. I'm Eliza Peters. And I'm Lily Carlson. Thanks for tuning in to this very special edition of GTV News.